Divine Prophetic Minister A prophetic minister can be male or female either as a prophet or prophetess, and either gender is the divine speaking inspiration for God. A prophetic minister wears a dress attire of clean fine garments. The prophetic minister develops relationships in the presence of God, to minister before God and the nations, his people. The Greek word for prophecy is propheteia, which means having the ability to receive visualizations and deliver them to the church. The sole purpose of prophecies is to convey what God wants us to know is to come, to not lose faith. Worship is the access to receiving revelations from God, and it is a gift formed by him as the universal God of vibrations, etc. Worshiping God for the testimony of Jesus is the righteous and true spirit of prophesying. The message can come in various ways, flashes of pictures, impressions, scripture verses, or even in sentence fragments. True visualized messages can be used for advice, comforting, correction, disclosure, exhortation, inspiration, and prediction to equip and edify the body of Christ. Exhortations are used to exhort with an utterance to, address, convey, discourse urgent advice or recommendations, all of which can be used with religious teachings. Today's form of predictions can be administered through a reading or revelation. A minister who possesses the gift of prophesying is sensitive to the voice of God and reasoning, for understanding God's wisdom which may include mysteries. They preach according to the measures of their faith and continually study scriptures for responding with doctrine. Often they are a mediator between God and humankind using approaches for reapproval of sins. Also, they deploy for a move by the Holy Ghost to inspire. They are in touch with their inner and outer vision and usually make a career out of the prophetic ministry. They put on their priestly garments and spend time in the presence of God, interpreting, meditating on the true discernment with faith. The prophetic minister distinguishes between thoughts of this lifetime, from thoughts of the past and thoughts of the future. It may involve the use of cognitive science which is similar to a later discussion aligning the conscious and subconscious, but it includes different disciplines such as neuroscience, phenomenology, philosophy, psychology, etc. New insights emerge with the transdisciplinary approach that goes beyond the different disciplines. The difference between thought and physical reality is a certain amount of time and physical activity. Both negative and positive thinking is a part of the process for a prophetic message to rule out what may not transpire. Example, when designing a home, styles must better compare to past styles, to bring them into the current time. To have a better quality of style, this is the future model design. Another concern is delivering the oral translation in a way receivers can receive it. Prophetic messages can be confused with true discernment whether it is distance, space, or time. Although neither exists in the spirit realm. Distant miles, place, or time. Distance as in 10, 100, or 1000 miles. An established place as in here, there, or beyond. Time as in 8, 16, or 24 hours. Time future, past, or present. The past meaning days, weeks, months, or years. Present as in currently. Week, months, or year. Space period as in soon, near future, or far future. Oral translations come from impressions, not exact details, so don't add extra details. Speak of weeks, months, or years, focus on the general impression with one period for a session rather specific detail of all three. Example, weeks meaning soon, months meaning near future, and years meaning far future. Another concern may be to warn the receiver there is no 100% accuracy of expectation of any given oral translation, but it should be administered and governed to comfort, edify, and exhort. I Corinthians 14 3, when receiving a prediction, sometimes you may get impatient with the time frame, or others judging whether the prediction is accurate. Give the prophesier your undivided attention throughout the session while, thinking what is God relaying through the prophesier. Predictions can enable discoveries of guidance, overcoming, strength, vision, etc. Though the message is a gift from God, it can prevent you from going down the wrong paths. Predictions enable you to trust God in a caring way, even though it isn't the core relationship. Jesus Prophecies, KJV In Matthew 16, 27, 28, he said, for the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here, which shall not taste of death, till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. In 24 2-6 he said, Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another, that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? and the end of the world. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. The destruction of the temple was fulfilled in AD 70. In 24 7-13 he said, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, 
and there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes, in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. The famine scripture has been associated with the third seal of Revelation in 6 colon 5, 6. In 2634 he said to Peter, Verily I say unto thee, that this night, before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. An account of this fulfillment was recorded in Matthew 26 colon 69, 75. In 26 colon 64 he said to Caiaphas, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power, and coming in the clouds of heaven. In which, the Jews and not just the high priest would see his coming. Example of a message, testing God with rebellion can cause failure. The gift of righteousness is offered through Jesus Christ's testimony. If you don't surrender to him failure will apply. You won't win running up against God, with the demons, devil, enemies, nor Satan. Your sins need to be reproved before God. It will require an individual effort, to achieve with forgiveness, grace, love, and mercy on your side. God's power over demons, devils, enemies, Satan, evilness, all unrighteousness are greater than universal laws. You must surrender with grace to receive mercy but be not conformed to worldly things. Your riches are in heaven, meditate on scripture through all warfare. Referencing to a tribulation message. Tribulations form in our life through afflictions, sufferings, trial tests, and trouble sometimes but too often when we are unconscious, vulnerable, or weakest. If you are focused on the enemy receiving trouble sometimes, you won't acknowledge when too much is too much or say enough is enough. This is when fear has taken control over what you do and say, and by then you may have overlooked the timeline for reconciliation with the enemy. This too can increase the negative energy in your life, making things escalate into mayhem. Generally, it is the most common prophecy message anyone wants to give to the enemy. Additionally, it is the most common emotion wasted, and the most talked about. In Romans 5 3 Paul said, But we glory in tribulations also, knowing tribulation worketh patience. God allows trouble to enter our lives to get us back focus and standing firm on his word, but during grief and trouble, we tend to give up on him most. Some people are just in a habit of hindering others from overcoming. Double negatives form into a negative positive in mathematics. The point is to know when going far or doing much is enough. Through Jesus we have faith that comes with grace which gives us peace, so give him glory for having experienced the tribulation. He will deliver you from the tribulations, all you need to do is rest your soul in him. Just pray the evil spirits are encouraging and strengthening if a reconciliation is possible. The less anger and bitter emotions you apply to non-dramatic grief, the faster you can overcome. Preaching God's Message Jesus has led many people through the gospel, by which all would believe the voice of reasoning coming from him to the pastor, edifying the word of God for baptism and repentance. The Spirit of God was upon him and he was anointed to preach the gospel to the poor, heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captive, set liberty to them that were bruised, along with raising the dead. All to prepare the congregation way of the Lord to make their path straight and become a witness to his experiences. A proper attitude and tongue are needed to possess and use the gifts God gives, this is to form the proper reactions and responses. It will too require proper actions and performances to execute respectable services in the church. A pastor knows to keep the commandments, appear godly, and be compassionate towards others in time of need, serve God with diversity, forgiveness, and love for unity. Love brings unity in a church, and you can't be critical of forgiveness, reconciliation, nor repentance. Every detail, dictation, notation, opinion, outline, review about the sermon are biblical for this is the pastor's place in the church. A pastor preaches the gospel according to how much faith he or she deploys, just as a prophesier prophesies. The pastor and the human body both must be humble to cast their cares upon God and remain true to events while waiting on him to deliver. He or she has to avoid accusing, arrogance, boasting, covetousness, despising, false witnessing, pridefulness, selfishness, even truce-breaking. Also, avoid loving pleasure more than God, and inserting opinions as truths. The pastor balances energy in the church while noticing by sight and discerning with natural affection. He or she speaks affirmatives, to avoid making one statement that contradicts the next or vice versa, and to avoid overemphasizing events or statements of the Bible. One aspect is antinomianism, believing Christians are freed from the moral law under grace as set forth by the gospel. This isn't a proven fact in the laws of the justice system anymore, because the belief advocates lawlessness for anyone hearing the message, times have changed and we people ought to. A pastor has to avoid playing down man-made creations and scientist findings to support lawlessness. And initially, the current pastor is not responsible for past false doctrine teachings, 
he or she can't erase what has been done. They are obligated to change within the heart and thought with the congregation, in turn, the church will change from the outside. The congregation will still need salvation throughout the transformation from false doctrine teachings. He that covers his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confess and forsake them shall have mercy. Proverbs 28,14, No one person functions by themselves, everyone functions together. So, a pastor doesn't tell you what your experience is as a witness of Jesus Christ, because this may be crossing the lines into an aggressive and controlling nature. The pastors and Sunday school teachers may give scriptures to read at home. You can share with them your experience, and he or she can share with you their experience as a witness. Signs of a false prophet 1. A firm mind of who goes to heaven and hell. 2. Teaching lawlessness for an archangel. 3. Preaching about the adversary without preaching about reconciliation with an enemy. 4. Denying Jesus' followers in the church. 5. Despising Jews, Gentiles, or other sect groupings. 6. No acknowledgement for the children coming through Jesus to receive their inheritance. 7. Unfruitful towards the message and how it will influence people. 8. Ignorance to the fact, Jesus said he would send us another comforter to abide by, specifically, his son Jesus Justice who inherited his reign. 9. No acknowledgement of the one human race facts. 10. Unbelief of freedom in heaven and on earth. 11. Truce breakers of loyalty and mutual agreements of families. 12. Unbelief in natural affection or resources for Jesus' followers. 13. Unforgiving nature toward animals or humans. 14. Prayer over repentance, when prayer cannot replace repentance. Those false prophet traits are based upon research and what others have said or stated. Overall view of the spirit world of demons. Psychiatrists commonly diagnose people with mental disorders. When in fact much hasn't changed about overly authoritarian parents supporting individuality in their children. It appears believers and non-believers just rather be dogmatic, and it doesn't matter whether either is right or wrong. When it comes to killings in schools and terrorist attacks, enough is going too far and doing too much criminally. Christians are unsure of the certainty of the church foundation for various reasons. One recent aspect was revealed when the government ran by Obama stopped supporting the church's belief system. When the bow breaks the cradle will fall, even though the church Jesus reign over started diminishing when Constantine schemed to unite his crumbling empire. Times have changed since Jesus became the King of Jews and the Messiah. Anyone can believe in Jesus and be a witness, but it takes a current Redeemer to deal with daily affairs and matters of the heart. The Jew scrolls that provided biblical versions can only form outdated doctrine, being valid information but not current. All believers have appreciated Jesus' righteous spiritual direction, but it is time for a change in the way believers think. It isn't a sin or wrong to have righteous talks about the future direction of the church. The general needs ought to be filled until the church age, or one living God renews righteousness with fruitful concepts and principles in the church. Authoritative figures, elders, parents, and police need to all come together and help reform the government's foundation to surround righteousness again. With a doctrine that has a living God, beliefs, events, values, and statements for their followers. To address, convey, edify, or preach current needs with the new technology. Leaders ought to be concerned and doing something about the increasing rates of mental illness. Lawlessness brings fear to anyone's heart.